I'm sensing I'm sensing an older woman in your life who's passed over. Is that from your mother or your, uh, your your father's side? I've got an old uncle coming through really strong. I smell tobacco. <laughs> Who was the smoker? <laughs> and I hear someone coughing. So I'll give you an example. One lady came to see us recently, and uh, she's an engineer. So very, very left brain. All of her studies has to do with the left brain, and she gets to the stage of her life, and she says, I really don't understand why I think and feel the way that I do, but I want to come to know my inner world. And so we did the voice recording, and... This is interesting. The technology just doesn't measure from time of birth. It also measures the emotional frequencies from the time that you spent in your mother's womb, from the third trimester. And the emotions had peaked significantly during that time that she was in her mother's womb. And they remained really, really high for the first 12 years of her life. Now, as we explored the emotional events that took place, what we discovered was that her father passed away whilst she was in utero. So the father died. Now, that experience is traumatic for the mother. But whatever the mother experiences, the child in utero also experiences to almost the exact same extent. So when the father passed away, he was the breadwinner. So when the child was born, it was born into a world of scarcity. We don't have enough income. You're going to have to go live with your grandparents. Mum's got to go to work. We have no provider in our life. You can't have those shoes. You can't go to the nice schools. Every dollar earned, we've got to save. A, a penny saved is a penny earned. All these things. And so for the first 12 years of her life, until the mother got remarried, they went through a financial crisis. And that storm was there for 12 years. Now, in those first seven years of our life, we go through what's called an imprint period. And whatever's happening in the outer world is imprinted onto our mind and body. So all of these financial fears, all of these financial limiting beliefs that she's hearing from the mother are being impressed upon her. Now, by the age of 12, we lock in our financial values. We lock in our values and rules of how we're going to live our life. So her rules of life are, there's not enough money. It can be taken away from you. You've got to provide for yourself. You've got to save it. You've got to save it for a rainy day. And so she always struggled financially. So as she gets into her 50s, she starts to have new goals. And she says, I don't want to work anymore. I want to be self-employed. But that thought triggers the fear. What if I leave and I lose my financial security? I'm single no carer to provide for me, no husband in my life. I don't want to have happened what happened to my mother. So I'm better off to stay in this career. And once you become aware of that, and you know, emotional intelligence has five factors. The first part is self-awareness. Once you can understand why you think and feel the way that you do, you can then do the second thing, which is to regulate those thoughts and feelings and to realize that these rules in life aren't working for you. And then through the process of coaching, not by magic or voodoo, you've got to reprogram your mind. And a part of that is things like affirmations. But it's also uh, doing deeper work and removing all of those fears. And so in the spirit of Mind Explorer, it's getting that awareness. And in medicine, they say accurate diagnosis is half the cure. And if you say that's exactly where those fears are coming from and you only have to work on that, then you're halfway to your goal. See, her problem wasn't skill and it wasn't knowledge. She's already making great money. It's the fears that stop her from doing what she truly wants, which is the problem.